So the step, first step is to, to figure out the layout of your painting. What proportion of your painting is gonna be sky or background or foreground? Foreground is what's up close. So you can see I have in the first and the left side an example of what it might look like if it was painted in. And then the next step is to choose your horizon lines. Do you want them to be wavy to make hills or do you want them to be fairly straight? On the example on the far right side, I have a combination of both. So the top part is gonna be your sky, the middle is gonna be your background and the front will be what you would see up close. And you have to make that decision. Use a very light pencil line because watercolors are transparent, which means you can see right Here's through it. Here's an example of some different colors that I chose from my backgrounds. In this one, I mixed together some green and blue on my tray together. And this one is a teal that was on my tray before. This is just a straight blue. This one I mixed some pink with some purple or red with some purple. There's some straight purple. And this is kind of cool. It's a morning picture and I use some orange and yellow. Okay. And so whatever you do, make sure if you're going to mix your color that you do it all at once and that you have a nice big pile of pool of color to choose from. You don't want to have to go back and try to remix it and match it up. So try to get a little extra. And you're going to use the same color in your background and your shadows. So um, you'll just water it down, but I'll show you how to do that. So here's some different options. I hope you can decide which one you want. Okay, so now I'm going to do my painting. And look at how faint my pencil lines are. Because remember I told you before that it is watercolors are transparent. So if your colors, your pencil marks are dark, they'll see through. So now I'm going to take this intense color that I mixed up and do the sky. Okay, and I'm going to use sweeping motions. And whatever I choose, it's going to dry darker than what I have here. So I don't be afraid to make sure you have a lot of color. Sweeping motions all the way across. And I'm going to go right up to my line that I drew. Okay. And then stop there. Okay, make sure I get all of it. This brush is kind of leaving some little brush hairs on there. That's okay. So then I will just leave that. That looks good to me. But now I'm gonna take this brush that I have here and I'm gonna add some water to it. I'm just gonna dip it in the water once, kind of shake it off. So it still has the paint on it, but now it's really watered down and I'm gonna do this middle part with that watered down version. But I wanna keep a little white dry line between the different, sky, between the sky and the middle ground. Do the best I can to just keep that, add a little bit more water to spread it out. Sweeping motion again, get that covered. If I went right up to my sky, then they would bleed together. And besides, this kind of gives us a, like it looks like the moon is shining down on the top of the hill and kind of gives it like a bright light that's shining down on it. And probably in my snow, I'd have some shadows of snow drifts. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of sweeping motions here, here and there, not very much, it's kind of random. And this is gonna curl up it's okay. Don't try to squish it down because if you do, you'll leave a thumbprint and a fingerprint. So let it curl up like this and it'll dry. And when it dries, it'll flatten out by itself. So just kind of set it aside. It'll probably take about 10 or 15 minutes to let to dry completely.